I said it's time for a conversation. Our guest is already in the studio. Uh, Ambassador Chiedu Osakwe. Uh, Chiedu Osakwe. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you Chiedu Osakwe much. is the Director General uh, Nigeria Trade Negotiation Office and also doubles as the Chief Negotiator of Nigeria. Welcome to the program, uh, Chiedu Osakwe. Thank you. Now, the your office uh, was established to meet a need and that had to do has to do with the issues of trade policies for Nigeria looking at what what it has been like and positioning the country in an advantage on an advantage side Tell, take us through what the policies have been like before now mm. oh thank you very much Ahiz. you've correctly described that uh, the president's establishment uh, in the federal executive council of the Nigerian Office for Trade Negotiations as part of a series of uh, presidential reforms uh, related also to uh, the establishment of the Industrial Policy and Competitiveness Advisory Council, related also to President Buhari's initiative on an enabling uh, environment for business. And so you have to look at the establishment of the Nigerian Office for Trade Negotiations uh, together with a series of uh, institutional reforms. Mm -hmm. What we've done so far, first, the mandate uh, given to the office was uh, go out, go into the African Union mm -hmm. and conclude the negotiations of the, uh, of the African continental free trade area. Yeah. Remember that this is an old idea, it's not a recent idea, it's an idea that goes back to uh, the establishment of the Organization of African Unity mm -hmm. in 1963. It's part of Nigeria's idea. So we did that job in the period of Nigeria's chairmanship, mm -hmm. and that was between June of 2017 and March uh, when we completed it. I was um, managing and leading the negotiations for the African Union mm -hmm. at the technical level, and my boss, um, Minister Anna Lama, the Minister of yeah. Trade, Industry and, um, and Investment was uh, leading it at the, um, at the level of ministers. So we got that done. Secondly, we're taking a hard look, as you already know, at uh, the economic community of West African states. Another of Nigeria's ideas, uh, remember, uh, that goes, this goes back to our president, um, General Gowan and uh, Yedemar in 1975. Mm. So the idea here is to undertake um, basically a full-scale reform of ECOWAS uh, to be sure that it serves the Nigerian economy better. Maybe, so, uh, maybe as a follow-up to that, we would like to know what you found out so far from some of the reviews you've done. Well, we've also, we've also, um, We've also, as you've correctly pointed out, embarked on a serious review yeah. of a trade agreement, including yeah. ECOWAS itself. The first thing is that they require update uh, to meet 21st century needs. Yeah. Trade has been handled for a very long time in Nigeria in isolation of complementary policies, yeah. investment policy, our policy on infrastructure, what do we do with trade defense, mm. uh, safeguarding Nigerian industry and manufacturing uh, from injurious trade practices, those who would cheat uh, by trade shipping, dumping, mm. and undermining our industry and agriculture. Mm. Secondly, we also found from the reviews that even though trade in services, did you know, accounts for 54%, mm of the GDP of this country, our trade agreements have not included services. In ECOWAS, there is no protocol on trade in services. Yeah. And this was one of the corrections that we tried to do, we tried to make, and we're successful in doing so, in the agreement establishing the African continental free trade area. Yeah. So to sort of bring it all together for you, one, as a, a consequence yeah. of our reviews, relate trade to other trade to other policies that would make it work trade policy is not a silver bullet secondly modernize and update our trade policies and the associated negotiations include investments now we're in the 21st century we have to deal with the digital economy mm -hmm. bring all this in so there's a lot of modernization that's uh, been a Working. consequence of mm -hmm. the reviews that we are integrating into a presidential process at this time. Thirdly, 
we had not. You know, we have to make some Catholic confessions at this stage, uh, <laughs> if I, if you allow that expression. Yeah. We'd not been as serious as we should be in involving the stakeholders in the Nigerian economy, both in the process of developing our trade policy yeah. and in the process of implementing it as well. And so a stakeholder configuration to build an infrastructure yeah. that would put all the stakeholders into play yeah. um, as well. And then coalitions and partnerships. Final thing I needed to say, and if I miss saying anything, I should not forget this. Coordination is critical. Coordination is critical. And the last point here is, did you know that, well, according to my friend, uh, the Director General of the National Bureau of Statistics, mm. Yemi Kelly, well over 50% of the Nigerian economy, GDP measurement, is informal, undocumented, yes, not part of the formal economy. So what we need to do in terms of the update of Nigeria's last trade policy that was done up in 2002 is to identify specific measures that would start the process of mainstreaming uh, the informal economy and bringing it into the formal economy. All right, now let's let's look at the ACFTA. There's been a, there, there's been divergent views in Nigeria about the delay in signing the agreement. Where where does the government stand as it is now? Well, thank you, uh, Christiana. Just to be clear that there are divergent views about trade and trade policy and mm -hmm. globalization in all countries in the world. So there is no Nigerian exceptionalism mm -hmm. on where we are with regard to the range of views, those pro, those against. Mm -hmm. it's, I'm a trade negotiator and a Nigerian diplomat. It's, this is not new. Where we are is, is, is your real question. Our president wanted us to undertake a nationwide consultation exercise. Mm -hmm. And the president's position was simple and frankly incontrovertible. If we are having an agreement that would establish a single market for trading goods and services, mm -hmm. Frankly, since 1963, with the establishment of the Organization of African Unity and the establishment of its successor, the African Union, mm -hmm. in 2002, yes. there has been no other notable, comparable notable development of significance like the AFCFTA. So he didn't want us sort of sliding into it um, noiselessly with a whimper without bringing it to the knowledge of the divert of the economy yeah. of the stakeholders one sensitizing them secondly in terms of deep knowledge building and capacity building uh, thirdly securing their own inputs and reactions regarding how the opportunities of the agreement would be maximized by those who would own it and implement it so where we are domestically is that we've completed on, on President Buhari's instructions an eight-month consultative exercise. Okay. North, east, south, and west, we've gone across the country. We met, I'm a bit of a stickler for numbers, 3,500 natural persons, spent approximately 250 hours, met with 35 groups all across the country, had five communiques from, the, from five geopolitical zones and a factual summary for the Southwest geopolitical zone. Mm -hmm. We are basically secure with regard to nationwide sensitization, stakeholder involvement, and now we are in the process that was inaugurated. Uh, you remember your news on the 22nd of October. Mm -hmm. We're now in the process of finalizing the readiness and impact assessment okay. for of Nigeria for the AFCFTA, and our report would go to the president, uh, to President Buhari for his decision making. When, when we look at some of the issues that have been raised, especially by you say manufacturers, uh, the, the position is that the country doesn't have uh, all that it needs to be in a position uh, in terms of 
increasing what we can take out. So that's why if we go ahead and sign, we will probably still have the issue of uh, imports into the country increasing, and, and they are calling for for uh, for slowdown mm. while we improve our infrastructure so that we can also uh, be able to at least export more. Uh, where, where, how would you look at the issues, especially from the manufacturing angle? Because they are the ones who are really saying that right now this agreement cannot go. Well, the, the position of the um, of man is slightly different. They are not against the agreement establishing the African continental free trade area. I have met them a number of times, mm -hmm. and these are, these are technically sound and patriotic. Uh, Nigerians as good as any other. The position of man is a credible and a legitimate position. Mm -hmm. I would like uh, the AFCFTA signed. Uh, not only, not just because I negotiated it, but because it's Nigeria's idea. It dates back to 1963. Uh, if you listen to the YouTube tape, and you would enjoy it, of Sabala was speaking to his counterparts in the AU. But man's position is a position that should be heeded, and we have heeded it, mm. and we are heeding it. Trade policy is not a silver bullet. There is no policy that is a silver bullet. If that rod if you with which you strike a piece of rock mm. and water flows from it, it doesn't exist. It's a powerful and strategic tool for growth mm. and for openness and for modernization and driving competitiveness. But it's a, it requires a cocktail. It requires a complementarity of other policies mm. to make it work. So, and man is not alone, by the way. What we got from stakeholders across Nigeria is we support the AFCFTA. We are not against the AFCFTA. And this is man's position. I, I know that because I speak with them. These are credible, serious people. Yeah. At the same time, at the same time, have a trade remedy infrastructure yeah. for the rules-based safeguard of the Nigerian economy yeah. to, to prevent transshipment and dumping. Have a workable and effective um, infrastructure for implementing the rules of origin. Thirdly, reduce the cost of money. Interest rates by a banks and in the economy are at a rate which makes which make them which makes them prohibitive for small businesses. Mm -hmm. Four. You have to develop a proper infrastructure for a consultative mechanism between the negotiators and those who are involved in the economy and driving it. The next point they have made, credible as well, and this is the point that you highlighted, yeah. is underscore productivity and competitiveness issues. In, in other words, and our response to them, not in a defensive way, is that what we have in place you have the President's Power Sector Recovery Program. You have the President's Industrial Policy and Competitiveness Advisory Council. It's chaired by, a vi it's chaired by our Vice President. Yes. And you have Vice Presidents from the private sector, including our own Alhaji, uh, Dan Gota, and Peter, Peter Side. Also, they have made clear to us identify specific measures, what we talked about earlier, Ahiz and Christina, that would start the process of integrating the informal sector, mm. which is well over 50% of our GDP, to, br to mainstream it into the formal uh, economy. We have also got, not from man, but you know, the various departments of man, female empowerment is a critical issue. Yeah. And that is directly related to creating a platform as part of the requirements that we need for the implementation of the AFCFTA, a platform for micro, small, and medium enterprises. Mm. So there's a whole raft of issues. And finally, of course, finally in the sense that, mm. well, look at it this way, we started off with it. 
improve the functioning of ECOWAS with regard to with regard to the common external tariff, mm. it's update. Remember, it's coming to mm. the transition period will end in 2009. And I'm hoping that you and I can talk about that and the trade liberalization scheme, scheme as well. So listen, you know, if I sort of levitate away from the minutia, the point they're making is a credible one. Don't go off and just negotiate agreements. You should because insularity is not an option. Mm. But do it at the same time as you have properly done up infrastructure with regard to complementary policies, the areas that we've talked about, and then have a good consultative mechanism uh, that would make your trade policy work. All right. All right, Ambassador, you talked about the issue of dumping and protecting our local industries in mm -hmm. the country. I know sometime in the year you were in Geneva to sign an agreement concerning this, that's a trade remedy law. Take us through what are the developments on that, correct? My God, you've been watching me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I had an agreement um, um, on behalf of Nigeria yes. with the leading law firm in the world called King and Spalding. On the basis of that agreement, this is what happened. I got uh, the head of the Trade Remedies Department uh, in the Nigerian Office for Trade Negotiations, uh, a, a guy called Tala Onayemi, implanted uh, in, the, uh, in King and Spalding law firm in Geneva for three months learning the nuts and bolts of the job. At the conclusion of it, we constituted a working group. Pay attention to this, my friends. A working group composed of lawyers in the, from the economic management team working directly under, the, um, under our vice president. We got lawyers and economists from the office of the chief of staff to our president. Mm and from my office as well, including me, and together we sat down and worked out a trade remedy infrastructure for the rules-based safeguard of the Nigerian economy. Mm. Believe me, the draft is top class, mm. world class. The draft is ready, and it will be part of the report that would go to uh, His Excellency uh, President Buhari as part of the report of the Impact and Readiness Assessment Committee. Okay. All right, uh, you're still watching uh, Morning Line with Nancy. We'll take a break here, Ambassador Chedu E. We'll still be in the studio to look at other issues, uh, especially concerning the remedy law, and we'll also be taking him up on the economic partnership agreement. How far with that EPA? It has caused a lot of controversy. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Are you an entrepreneur or small business owner looking for a fast and cost-effective way to grow your customer base? If yes, Moneyline with Nancy is offering you an opportunity to showcase your business on our big small business segment to help you reach out to more customers. Take advantage of this platform. Reach us today on 0814-833-9088 or email us at Moneyline with Nancy at gmail.com. Moneyline with Nancy. Supporting small businesses. Are you an entrepreneur or small business owner looking for a fast and cost effective way to grow your customer base? If yes, Moneyline with Nancy is offering you an opportunity to showcase your business on our big small business segment to help you reach out to more customers. Take advantage of this platform. Reach us today. On 0814-833-9088 or email us at moneylinewithnancy at gmail.com. Moneyline with Nancy, supporting small businesses to grow. All right, welcome back. Uh, if you're just joining us, we've been looking at issues surrounding Nigeria's trade policies and uh, how the country has been trying or is trying to ensure that our trade policies favor the country and uh, that was one of the reasons why the uh, office for trade negotiation was uh, put in place and the director general of the office ambassador chido sakwe is in the studio with us uh, looking at issues before we went on the break uh, ambassador we we're looking at the issue of the remedy trade remedy law we would like to know or nigerians would like to know what these remedy laws what it will how it will change uh, the situation of things now and why the law had to oh, oh, it's coming up 
the reason the reason that you have uh, trade remedies is because there are trading counterparts that cheat. Okay. What does cheating mean? I need to uh, mm. keep away from the esoteric language of cheating. But, of cheating. Yes. but essentially, cheating takes place at three levels. One, a trading partner that would subsidize a product, the production of a product, mm. like the glass of drinking water. Mm. In other words, give um, subsidies that could be direct loans, that could be loans not paid back, that could be trade finance, that could be export withdrawal grants, and so that the product, the product costs lower uh, in another market, which takes you to the second form of cheating, and that is dumping. So remember, the first is illegal and trade distorting subsidization, mm -hmm. that the rules of trade that have been negotiated and reflected in schedules of commitment mm -hmm. do not allow. Mm -hmm. The second is willfully, willfully selling a product below the market price, in other words, below the price of which is produced in the originating country, with the clear intention of cornering the market and driving um, the rest of the, your competitors mm -hmm. in a target market out of business. Now, the third reason you have trade remedies mm -hmm. is not actually the consequence of cheating. It's a safeguard yeah. that the rules of trade allow. In common lingo, you can call it a handbrake. When you enter into a process of liberalizing trade, by, to put it simply, reducing tariffs or eliminating tariffs or reducing subsidies, what you, probably, what you would have normally, if you're, regardless of the size of the market, would be an inrush of exports, which is not a terrible thing, but it can have a destabilizing effect on domestic industry. Mm -hmm. So the third form of the trade remedy is what you call either a preferential safeguard, which is what we negotiated and we have the provisions and the agreement establishing the African continental free trade area, mm -hmm. or you have a global safeguard as we have in the WTO. And so you have two trade remedies you can use. So what we have done, uh, Christiana de Hees, is to take the rules that we have both on the WTO, because Nigeria is one of yes. the 164 mm -hmm. members of the WTO, and paste them basically, because they're good rules, into the, uh, the protocol on trade remedies, mm -hmm. which is an annex to the protocol on trade in goods, and then have a mechanism domestically for its implementation. Mm -hmm. And so we've done a pretty good job. There will be administrative uh, procedures and regulations uh, that would enable its enforcement. Can I say one other thing on this? Because I think it's absolutely critical. ECOWAS, the revised ECOWAS protocol. And this is how we should also look at the agreement establishing the African continental free trade area. We can actually use it to correct some of the weaknesses that we have in ECOWAS, which Nigeria needs. We need ECOWAS, mm -hmm. not just because it's a good idea, but it's our region and we need that market. But there are weaknesses and areas of improvement. One is the area of trade remedies. What you have in Article 42, 3A of the revised ECOWAS protocol, is that if a member, one of the 15 members, if one of the 15 members complains about trade, about dumping and injurious trade practices, what the ECOWAS protocol provides for is that that member reports it to the ECOWAS council mm -hmm. and the ECOWAS council will investigate the origins of the causes and that's the end of it. Mm.
that is, that is a no that is a no provision and we've been able to improve on this based on what we've done domestically that hopefully we'll submit to the president for signature and what we have in the AFCFTA. Time, time is really not on our side but we're moving now to the issue of common external tariff and mm. uh, trade liberalization uh, which you spoke about so you want to maybe you will allow you to take a sip from your water and then oh, we'll go straight fine. into Absolutely. the current issues surrounding common external tariffs and how Nigeria is also uh, playing along. The common external tariff um, deals with trading goods. The period of the period of transition for the CET will end in 2019 mm -hmm. uh, next year, mm. uh, which would entail a review. Mm? But even before then, what has intervened? is that you have an agreement now establishing the African Continental Free Trade Area. Yes. Uh, and we can talk about the state of play with regard to its rat those who are ratifying it's mm. coming into effect. But I'm, I'm dealing with a he's a, a, a specific question. Well, we are now apropos the question of the common external tariff, mm. which makes ECOWAS a customs union, mm. is that for the AFCFTA, the answer to your question is that you must relate it, you must relate it to the AFCFTA. Mm. The goods schedule, the schedule for tariff concessions for trade in goods in the agreement establishing the African Continental Free Trade Area shall be based on the contributions and the submissions that will be made by customs unions, mm -hmm. such as ECOWAS, such as SACU, such as the East African Community into the AFCFTA. Mm -hmm. So, although the CET would expire in 2019, in 2019 mm -hmm. even before, we are now in the process of negotiating an updated schedule mm -hmm. for the CET that would be submitted as the input mm. of ECOWAS as a customs union to the AFCF. Okay, Ambassador, we are gradually running out of time, but let's have you tell us the, the developments in the Economic Partnership Agreement. Where, where do we stand currently? Well, in terms of where Nigeria stands, yes. several clear points. Nigeria will neither sign or ratify it, and for all the right reasons in the world, Niger our relationship with the European Union is a strategic relationship. Yes. Mm. It's a relationship that's positive. We, uh, our relationship with the European Union is one that um, we, will, we shall continue to build on and consolidate and we want to take it further. And as I said, the European Union is probably uh, one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, uh, customs union and trading uh, economic yes. groupings in the world. Mm -hmm. But it, won't, it will not be on the basis of the economic partnership agreement. And the, the reason is simple. It's, uh, it's a 20th century agreement. Mm -hmm. It's not a 21st century agreement. Mm -hmm. It's AFC FTA minus. Mm. It deals with goods, parts of agriculture. That's the EPA. Mm. Doesn't deal with services. Yes. Doesn't yes. deal with uh, intellectual property. Doesn't deal with the digital economy. Mm. So it, it requires modernization. Mm -hmm. I think we have to go back to the drawing board. Finally, before we go, the issue of what is happening in global economy. You have the US and China. And the, the, your rep the report on trade policy is spoken on the fact that India and the United States and Nigeria are two top. Uh, trading partners in terms of export in three quarters of 2017, while China and Belgium and Nigeria stop trading partners in terms of import. Now, China and the U.S. on one side and the Brexit, how are we uh, positioning on that quickly before we leave? Well, our president has been clear, he was clear in the statement that uh, he made at the Commonwealth Summit mm. um, earlier in the year mm. that trade wars I lose, lose. Mm. No one wins. Okay. Secondly, if and that's that's a, that's a clear position. It's a credible position, and it's the right position mm. to take. Secondly, if you look at the October report of the International Monetary Fund, yes. uh, the trade tit for tat, mm. the tariff sanctions. Mm. Uh, and the application of higher tariffs in the area of aluminum and steel mm. uh, risk 
for the application of tariff mm. on wines and cars mm. as big and the geopolitical tensions in the in the global economy are beginning to cause a deceleration a reduction mm. in mm. the rate of growth in the global economy mm. and Christina I was looking at your at your dash mm. at your race through global markets mm. and every every market basically apart from one Asian market yes, yes. basically all the markets I saw you taking the Nigerians through we're just into bearish territory. And mm -hmm. so um, mm -hmm. trade wars are good for no one. Mm -hmm.